If you've seen Cyberpunk Edgerunners, you know that Maine is the leader of the crew that David Martinez is a part of. Maine has a long history, and by the time we see him, he's already a veteran mercenary in Night City with dreams of making it big, but he also values his friendships and his crew more than glory. Now, even though his obsession with improving his cyborg led to his cyber psychosis, we don't have that problem with V. So let's take what we know about his weapons and his cyborg and make it even better. The first thing I want to talk about is how to distribute your attribute points and what perks to put on for this build. And as you can tell, I am level 60, which means I have Phantom Liberty, so I get 10 extra attribute points to distribute here. So just keep those things in mind. I have Body at 20, Reflexes at 20, Tentacle Ability at 20, Cool at 17, and Intelligence at 4, and there's a reason for that. First up, let's talk about Body. And as you can tell, it's kind of the main perks we're going to be focusing on for this build because it all really fits main extremely well, especially this middle treat, which is all about health regen benefits. I pretty much maxed out everything down here, took Adrenaline Rush, obviously put that all the way at the top, not only just for the health and health regen benefits, but because with Adrenaline Rush, with our health items, we get even more health, which gives us Adrenaline, and there's a bunch of benefits to that, such as Calm Mind. With Unstoppable Force, we literally are immune to Knockdown and Blinding. Juggernaut, so we get increased movement speed and damage, but also with Pain to Gain, the legendary perk you can only get at 20. So when Adrenaline Rush is active, we get plus 20% health item recharge. After neutralizing an enemy, we definitely need that. Now the left skill tree is all about shotguns, light machine guns, and heavy machine guns. Now the main thing with main is that he uses shotguns for his build, so we're definitely going to be taking advantage of pretty much every single perk here. Max out die, 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 as you can tell, that's Rebecca right there. Go ahead and put on Like a Feather, Don't Stop Me Now, Bullet Ballet, Max out Spontaneous Obliteration, which un unlocks Obliterate, which is pretty much the chance to instantly kill a target no matter what their health is, which is just absolutely insane to me. Toss on Close Quarters Carnage with Skullcracker, Dread, and then Rush of Blood. Now with Rush of Blood and Juggernaut, we get this middle perk, which is Bloodlust. So when Adrenaline Rush is active, we get plus 50 Adrenaline on Dismemberment of a nearby enemy. So you pretty much get free Adrenaline <laughs> on a Dismemberment, which is absolutely nuts. And then... For the Legend perk, I'm tossing on Rip and Tear. Now, it's not something I really take advantage of a lot, but it is kind of helpful. So you get 100% damage for a, your next quick melee attack after shooting an enemy with the shotgun, and you get 100% damage on the next shotgun shot after hitting an enemy with a quick melee attack. You don't even have to kill them, you just have to hit them. And this right skill tree is all focused around blunt weapons, which can include the Gorilla Arm Cyberware. So again, max out Wrecking Ball here, put on Breakthrough, Kinetic Absorption. This is going to be good if you're blocking attacks. We have Clap Back here with Fly Swatter, and then Max Out Quake. Quake pretty much allows you to do the jump and the slam, and we get a variety of benefits from doing this. Number one, which is Epicenter. So when Quake is performed from midair, it's area of effect and damage scale with your fall speed and fall distance. So it pretty much, the higher up you are, the bigger the Quake. And then we also have Aftershock here. So we get plus 30 stamina for <laughs> each enemy hit with the Quake. And if you max Calm Mind with Aftershock here, we get ripple effect, so we get plus 15% health for each enemy hit by Quake. And then the big perk, which is finisher, which is Savage Sling. So you get two options here. So number one, you could finish them with the blunt weapon, or when they're ready to be finished, you can pick up the enemy and throw them, which is just absolutely nuts. And I feel like kind of fits with main's build and personality. Now reflexes I put at 20, and a lot of these perks are fairly interchangeable. I personally like Slippery with Muscle Memory and Multitasker. Pretty much allows us to shoot and reload while we're sprinting, sliding, and vaulting. I do like Parkour for the increased vaulting and climbing speed. Definitely max out Dash here. Go ahead and put on Mean Streak, Steady Grip, and then Can't Touch This for the mitigation chance while you're dashing. And then Air Dash. Obviously, you definitely want this. The mid-air dash is really good for movement. Now, I understand Main doesn't move that quickly. He's a big guy, but like I said, we're on V now, so we can kind of be a little more broken go ahead and toss on aerodynamic with aerial acrobat and then i like its legend perk which is tailwind so we get plus 25 percent stamina from performing air dashes and double jumps air dashes do not cost stamina which pretty much saves us on our stamina consumption now let's go over technical ability because we do have a couple of important things to talk about here but Mainly, this middle section is all about bonuses to our cyber, so go ahead and max out all things cyber with Chrome Constitution, Renaissance Punk, Lucky Day, this is really good for crafting components, and then lastly, Driver Update. Now, whenever you go to upgrade your cyber, make sure to put on Chipware Connoisseur. You can take off a per point somewhere and put it on when you upgrade so you get bonus stat modifier options, so you can kind of cater your build just a little more, and then you can take it off. This pretty much saves you a perk point so you can put it somewhere else. Go ahead and max out License to Chrome. Pretty much at level three, if you max out, we get that extra Cyborg slot for the Skeleton. Go ahead and put on Cyborg, Ambidextrous, which gives us an extra Cyborg slot for our hands. 
We also like extended warranty. And then I like built different for the cellular adapter cyberware. Now the only way to use that piece of cyberware is to have this perk on. And we definitely want to take advantage of it because there are some pretty cool bonuses when we max out <laughs> our tech ability, which we do. And then obviously we have on Edge Runner here. This is pretty much cyber psychosis. And like I mentioned, main does go cyber psycho in the anime, unfortunately. If you haven't watched, I don't want to spoil it too much, but anime is very good so this allows you to exceed your cyber capacity by up to 50 points at the cost of minus 0.5 percent max health per point so when you neutralize an enemy during combat there's a 0.1 percent chance for each point your over capacity that you will enter a fury state and in this state you gain 10 percent damage plus 30 percent crit chance and plus 50 percent crit damage the duration is 12 seconds and you get plus three second duration for each <laughs> neutralization while fury is active so as long as you're killing targets you can keep up your cyber psychosis and then we have this left skill tree which is all about bonuses to our health items and our grenades so i tossed on glutton for war just to you know max out to get everything else up here i did put on transfusion so i get plus 30 percent health from the final charge of our health item max out health freak and then max out pyromania pretty much this gives us bonuses to explosive things which can include our projectile launch system on our arm cyber which i'll talk about when we get to the cyber portion but you get plus five percent movement speed plus ten percent explosion damage for 12 seconds after hitting an enemy in combat with an explosion if you take damage from the explosion the effect adds two stacks instead of one and you can stack up to five times now with this you also get heat shield which increases your mitigation chance per stack you also get burn the city so when you get five stacks <laughs> they'll be consumed to instantly replenish your grenade charge but all bonuses from the stacks will remain active for six seconds. Definitely put on friendlier fire. Now, with friendlier fire, again, you do get more resistance to your own explosions, but with ambidextrous paired with it, we get Doom Launcher, which is the specific bonus for the projectile launch system, which gives us an extra charge, 20% recharge speed, 25% additional recharge speed when you have no charges, plus 200% additional recharge speed outside of combat, and plus 5% instant recharge after <laughs> neutralizing an enemy, and can also receive the benefits from Burn This City. Under cool, as you can see, I have it at 17, and I'm not using any perks under here. Now you're like, David, why the heck would you max out cool? Well, the reason being is because with cool, you get plus 0.125% crit damage per HP point, and I definitely want more crit damage. Under intelligence, I just put it at four in case you need to use a cyber deck for car quick hacks or anything like that. Again, you could take off this perk point and then put it on cool. So then you have 18 cool, which means more crit damage. So again, do with that information what you will. Now, if you have Phantom Liberty and access to the Relic Skill Tree, there are two things I would recommend focusing on first. First up being this bottom right section, which is vulnerability analytics. So it allows you to detect vulnerabilities in enemy armor and cyborg. And when you hit them, it's 100% crit chance, 25% armor penetration, and other weak spot damage bonuses. But once you destroy the vulnerability, it causes an EMP blast and its bonus, machine learning. So once you destroy a vulnerability, you get plus 10% frequency of new vulnerabilities appearing, plus 5% crit damage against those vulnerabilities. It lasts 25 seconds, can stack up to five times, and reaching max stacks doubles all those effects. And the other perk to look into is going to be Jailbreak in this top section. So with Jailbreak, it gives you bonuses to all of your arm cyberware. The two, like I mentioned, that are kind of main with this build is number one, the Gorilla Arms, which pretty much allows you to build up to a massive, strong shockwave attack. And then with the projectile launch system, you can actually charge it up to get five rockets instead of just the one, which is kind of just kind of broken in and of itself. But those also come with their own set of bonuses. First up, being with the Gorilla Arms, you get limited removal. So the Shockwave from Gorilla Arms attack now knocks down all enemies within the range. And then Launch Capacity Overdrive, you get plus one charge for the projectile launch system. Now let's talk about main cyber and how we can improve upon it with V. So according to his wiki page, he had Cyber Optics, Cyber Audio, EMP Threading, a mixture of arm cyber between the projectile launch system and Gorilla Arms. It'd be cool if we can do that in game without having to you know mod it because i know with mods you can do it some sort of way you can put on like multiple pieces of cyberware on the arm section but for people who are on console or for people who just don't want to mod the game again i'll be giving you both those options when we talk about it and he also had a pair of cyber legs our first and main piece of cyberware i want to talk about is under the operating system and i'm going to be using the chrome compressor so it does cost zero on our cyberware it's a plus 70 to our cyberware capacity over here which is very nice obviously he doesn't use a cyber deck main's not a net runner he doesn't use the uh, sand devastan you know because david took the apogee from under his nose and installed it himself and then he doesn't use a berserk which i'm fairly surprised but fairly not the thing with berserk is that once you pop it you can only use melee weapons which we could use the gorilla arms which I'll, again i'll talk about when we get to the arm cyberware but 
even under the wiki, it says he doesn't use the Berserk. So I find that the Chrome Compressor is our best option here and allows us to put on some other iconic pieces of cyberware. Under the Frontal Cortex, first up here, I'm going with Self Ice to automatically negate enemy quick hacks upon me. So if there's a Netrunner and they try to hack me, it's not going to happen. I like Mechatronic Core for the bonus damage against drones, robots, mechs, and turrets. Then lastly, I like the Quantum Tuner. Now, this is a Phantom Liberty piece of cyberware, and the only way to get it, slight spoiler alert, is siding with Songbird during the Firestarter mission and completing her whole quest. Now, I don't want to spoil it because the missions for it are freaking awesome, but that's how you get this piece of cyberware. If you want more information, definitely go look it up. I'm not going to spoil you. Now, whenever another cyberware implant is fully used, Quantum Tuner instantly restores its cooldown up to a maximum of 40 seconds, and its cooldown is 60 seconds outside of combat, but its passive effect is minus 12% cooldown time for all other cyberware, which means any piece of cyberware that we have that has a cooldown timer, this pretty much just allows it to cool down even faster automatically. On our arm cyberware, like I said, you have the one of two options. Number one being the projectile launch system, which I'm heavily taking advantage of, especially with the tech tree perks here, especially with Doom Launcher, Pyromania, Heat Shield, Burn the City, Friendly of Fire, stuff like that. I'm definitely going to be taking advantage of that. But if you did want to use the Gorilla Arms, you totally can. They count as a blunt weapon, which means Gorilla Arms can activate Quake and also the finisher savage sling which allow you to you know hit enemies and also throw them so again if you want to use the gorilla arms you totally can under the skeleton first up here i'm going with bionic joints so it's low cyber cost and gives us a decent amount of armor for it next up is the epimorphic skeleton which gives me plus 50 percent max health at tier 5 plus plus and then lastly i'm going with the iconic version of the parabellum which is the rah rah avis it's a plus 42 percent armor boost at tier 5 plus plus so that helps us out a lot over there and what's cool is that it's body attuned, and since we have 20 body, that means we get plus 40 health for just having this piece of cyberware on. Under the nervous system, first up here, I'm going Neo Fiber for the bonus percentage chance of my mitigation chance and strength, which pretty much allows me to take reduced incoming damage. And so the higher mitigation chance, which means you take less damage, and the higher mitigation strength means the effectiveness of how much damage you don't take. So keep that in mind. Next piece of cyberware, I'm taking advantage of the iconic version of the visual cortex support, which is the deep field visual interface. Now, crit chance increases the farther you are from the enemy. This is at tier 5, so it's a max 100% at 100 meters. So, pretty much no matter what distance I'm at, I'm basically getting an increase to my crit chance no matter what. And with it being cool tuned, I get plus 17% crit damage. And then for the last piece, I'm using the iconic version of the adrenaline converter, which is the adreno trigger. So I get plus 30% movement speed for 40 seconds when entering combat, which again, this build is you're going in loud. So you're going to be in combat right off rip. And with it being reflex attuned, we get plus 60 seconds <laughs> with this cyberware. So that means we get a hundred seconds total of this bonus movement speed. Under the integumentary system, first up here, I'm rocking the iconic piece, Chitin. So what's pretty cool is that Yes, it does cost a lot on cyberware. We do get a decent amount of armor, but we get additional health regen. And since it's body attuned, we get 200% health regen rate. So that's automatically a W right there, which means we get our health back even faster. Next up, I'm using the iconic version of the proxy shield, which is the peripheral inverse. The closer an enemy is, the less damage they deal to you. Minus 45% incoming damage at three meters, and that tapers off up to six meters. And since it's body attuned, we get plus 10 health for just having this piece on. And then lastly, like I mentioned, I am using the cellular adapter piece of cyber, which again, you have to make sure you have on this perk here built different to even, to even be able to use it. Now, this comes with a variety of bonus that are tied to our tech ability. And as you know, we have tech at 20. So we get plus 20% explosion resistance, 10% tech weapon damage. That doesn't really matter here. But the other two big ones, which is plus 10% health item recharge speed and plus 10% grenade recharge speed. So those two things are very huge here. For my optics, I'm opting to use the Kuroshi Cockatrice optics. Now, you don't get anything special out of these, like being able to see enemies through walls or anything like that, but it just gives you a straight bump to your crit chance, which is 35% at tier 5++. plus plus. So... It's basically even more crit chance for us. For our hand cyberware, first up, I'm using the iconic immovable force. We get minus 33% recoil, minus 25% bullet spread, and automatically activates effects for ranged weapons that otherwise would only occur behind cover. So we get a huge bonus here with this piece of cyberware. And then secondly, I'm using smart link. Now, with his weapon options, he does use a smart shotgun, which I'll talk about when we get to weapons, but this allows us to take advantage of it even more. So we get plus 20% target lock on duration with tier 5 plus plus and plus 50% crit damage with smart weapons. Under the circulatory system, first up here, I'm going with heal on kills. So whenever I neutralize an enemy, I get health back, pretty simple. 
Next is Biomonitor. So it automatically heals you with your equipped health item when your health drops below 35%, and it gives you a plus 16% health item effectiveness. So you definitely want to take advantage of that. Then lastly, I'm using Clutch Padding, so I get minus 20% stamina cost for shooting. So with the guns that I'm using, I definitely want to make sure I have my stamina up so I can take advantage of them even more. And then lastly for your leg cyber, I'm personally just gonna go with the reinforced tendons for the double jump. I think it's the best out of pretty much all the options we have here, but you can honestly use what you like. Now let's talk about Main's weapons. Now, according to the wiki, he used mostly shotguns, number one being the Militech Crusher, which was a magazine-fed semi-automatic shotgun, and the Kang Tao L69 Zhu, which is the smart shotgun, so that's why I have the smart link. Now, there's a variety of other iconic shotguns you can use, and I would recommend looking up on how to get these because I'm not going to run through how to get every single one, but definitely look into guts. This is Rebecca's shotgun from Edge Runner, so I find it pretty fitting if you want to use this shotgun. It's absolutely destructive. You also have things like the Order, which is a double barrel tech shotgun. You have the Sovereign. You have the Alibi. You have Bloody Maria. You have the Deserter, which is honestly one of my favorite, you know, just shotguns to use in general. It's also, also a Pargus weapon, and it causes you to light on fire, which is just hilarious. We also have the Mox. You have the Headsman, which is a slug shotgun. Like, you have so many options in this game to choose from. Just pick your favorite. Now, I know I mentioned that King Tao smart shotgun, but if you wanted to be a little more creative, you could go with the iconic version of it, which is the Ba Jing Chong. Now, what's pretty cool about this smart shotgun is that it's not really a shotgun. Uh, it's actually a rocket launcher. So, fires explosive rounds. This weapon can smart target up to six enemies simultaneously. Everything caught in the blast radius is torn to shreds. Be careful, that goes for you too at low health. Reload speed and bird chance is increased. This can take advantage of pyromania and all those other perks. This pretty much is a free rocket launcher that we can use with this build. The only way to get it is that you actually have to beat the game first and make sure you have a point of no return save to return to because at the ending credits of whatever playthrough that you decide to do since there's multiple endings for this game, Make sure to choose one more gig so you spawn outside of Embers. It'll give you an access token for Ebunike on the ship where you get Johnny's pistol because that's where Adam Smasher's apartment is and that's where you can pick up the schematic for this shotgun, <laughs> aka rocket launcher. Now for your last weapon, since I am using the projectile launch system, I would recommend a blunt weapon. It doesn't really matter which one you have. I personally like Murphy's Law from Phantom Liberty, but again, there's a variety of iconic blunt weapons you can use from one-handed to two-handed ones, baseball bats, cattle prods, shovels, hammers, anything that you want to use is totally fine for this. The main reason I have to have on a blunt weapon is to take advantage of all the perks under body on the right side, which is all about those blunt weapons. If I had gorilla arms on my arm sideware, I would have no need for this, but Again, you have to have a blunt weapon on to take advantage of these things. You know, Wrecking Ball, Quake, the finisher, Savage Sling to be able to throw targets. You have to have a blunt weapon on to take advantage of it. So that's why I have it on. And <laughs> what's hilarious enough is that it's so overpowered. I took out a whole group of max tech officers with just a blunt weapon. No shotguns for this build. I just used the blunt weapon. It's disgusting. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is my maxed out main Edge Runners build. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you go test this build out for yourself and there's something that you like using, whether it's a piece of cyberware, a weapon, or something under the perks that you like using, definitely let me know in the comments. This game is very versatile. And like I said, I tried to pull as much information as I could from the anime and the wiki page to copy his build and just improve upon it as much as I can. In any event, if what you saw was valuable or entertaining to you, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and then turn on the bell next to notifications so you don't miss out on another build video here on the channel. If you didn't know, we live stream on YouTube, Twitch, and TikTok simultaneously across the board. So if you want to tune into a live stream, again, we will be live three days a week in the evening starting at 8 p.m. Eastern. We are mainly going to be playing Destiny 2. Again, we are doing Dungeon Carries, Warlords Ruin Dungeon Carry. So if you need help with it, we can definitely get you in the queue. But we're also going to be playing other games. And if you want to be proactive, join my Discord because that's where we're going to be chatting. And we also have people looking to play Destiny 2 together. And we're also talking about other games, PC Tech, anime, and more. And lastly, if you want to support the channel even more, you can look into becoming a member. If you don't know what a membership is, it's essentially like a Twitch subscription, but it is cheaper. And the main benefit with it is you get access to all of my videos early as a member, no matter what tier you are. But there are some other benefits in there that I would recommend checking out. And if you would like more information, all you have to do is press the join button next subscribe, and I'll give you a rundown with all the details you need. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's been your boy. We'll catch you in the next one. Shoo! Come on! With the pain, you fool!